true life and music history. The Ants Human Stars podcast with your hosts, Caleb and Digo. Are you ready? Steady. Go. People don't go on cruise. <laughs> They're like, look, just take me straight to the destination. Um, <laughs> but I've never had the desire to like go on a cruise. I'm just like, eh. I will say they're nice. Those ships look nice. But, but you know, th- there's this spot in Barcelona. It's like way up in the hills. It's like really far up, and there's a little teeny. You know, you know when you're that far up, you see the cruise boats. They still look huge, but it doesn't matter how big it is. It's not the size of a city. So mm-hmm. I'm here. On a on this seemingly huge boat, but it's actually very insignificant compared to a city. And a city can be, you know, I could be like in Barcelona. I, I'm, you know, it happens where I'm like, uh, eh, what are we gonna do tonight? What's there to do? I don't know. We'll stay in. And that's a whole fucking major metropolis known as Barcelona, <laughs> uh-huh. famous, infamous, everything. A boat, Weird. like. A, a fraction the size of the city it doesn't matter how big it is it's still tiny to me in in my eyes anyways um understood the food uh just being cramped around with you know so many people and just okay if you're out in the wild okay out in the city you know like everybody's doing their own thing everybody's either going to work or whatever they're doing they're doing their own thing but when you're on a cruise it's like everybody's on the cruise so you can basically i guess like you're always going to be like open up just chatting with people or like and i don't i mean it's not like i'm an introvert but i the whole time i need my alone time the whole time I'm just away like, from people time all these people and they're gonna be like, hey what's um no i don't know i don't want to do that and in all the entertainment but it's like entertainment on a cruise ship the dj at the cruise it's probably not going to be my style or you know and it's gonna be the one Digo walks up to the dance floor and just stands and just looks around like, what am I doing this here? This is wrong. Drop me off the next port. <laughs> <laughs> he goes and gets his bag. Uh, He's just waiting there. They're still sailing. <laughs> just... By the way, through all these horse stories, I did find out that if you're uh, an employee of the cruise boat and you get if like you get fired like because you've done something wrong, like you're getting fired, fired, mm-hmm. they just drop you off at the next port whatever it doesn't matter where it is like the next Dang. stop you're off and figure it out there's so many people who in reddit they were like yeah yeah, it's true i'm i used to work with a lot and that's how it is like they'll just drop you off at the next port um wow the reason is i guess like they need you off but everyone who works at a cruise has like the right passports and stamps and yeah, everything yeah, yeah, to yeah, yeah. be able to go on these places and even if you don't have a visa you still have a 24-hour window so like, yeah, I don't have a visa for this country, but I just got dropped off at this cruise boat. I will leave. I just literally need. I'm going to leave tomorrow. Like, I just need. You need to get out though in 24 hours. Anyway, mm. so uh, I'll start with the Insider. dot com post about 12 cruise ship horror stories that will make you want to stay on land. <laughs> mm. uh, on the Royal Caribbean. More than 500 passengers became ill within two months. In January, a spokesperson for the Royal Caribbean Cruises announced that 47 passengers on the grandeur of the seas, which departed from Baltimore, reported symptoms of gastrointestinal illness. A cruise from Singapore to Australia had over 200 reported cases of illness, and 332 cases of illness were reported from a cruise from Florida. Mm. So these are just like quick little like bites of like information of... There's actually websites dedicated to how many people people have died on cruises of what causes and so so on and so forth um there's a lot of fucking cruises and how about uh a crew member was killed during a lifeboat drill a cruise ship's crew member on the royal caribbean harmony of the seas by the way don't go royal caribbean (laughs) there's so many of those uh harmony of the seas was killed in september 2016 during a lifeboat drill he was sitting with four other crew members in a lifeboat when it disconnected from the ship and fell 33 feet from the deck into the water in marseille france dang um, one more from this article. Uh, one, two more. Uh, passengers got stuck on a cruise to nowhere during Hurricane Irma. 
passengers on a Norwegian cruise line ship Sky and Escape had had to escape had to make an early escape return to Miami in September 2017 due to Hurricane Irma because it was nearly impossible to find hotel combinations the cruise line allowed displaced passengers to board the escape back on and go on a cruise <laughs> yeah, to <escape>. nowhere <laughs> We don't know where we're going, but literally just just doing circles around, like you know, like when you can't land Mm -hmm. on the plane, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, But you know, sometimes this might actually prove to be awesome because luckily they had access to food, water, alcohol, and were not charged for that time. So they were just Mm, they were living, 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 throwing up all over the place. Uh, Um, I I feel bad for the cleanup crew. (laughs) It's the worst job ever, dude. Um, and this one, a ship with more than 4,000 passengers became stranded and a fire in one of the diesel generators, uh, Dang. killed the propulsion causing the ship to become stranded. The passengers had limited food, few working toilets and elevators while they waited for the ship to be tugged to shore. Mm. Uh, I'm going to jump to the Reddit cause this one's so spicy. I love it. These are personal stories. These are, this is a Reddit Cruise ship workers of calling to all cruise ship workers of Reddit. What's the biggest oh shit moment on the boat that luckily passengers didn't find out at all? <laughs> uh, one time I was on a cruise. This is from Denny Say. Uh, one time I was on a cruise, a few cabins down, a man and a woman who were cheating on their wife and husband, respectively, got super drunk, fell over the edge of the balcony from really high up. It was night. The whole cruise ship stopped once it was reported and then took the entire day to search for them. Apparently, the man had his jeans on or something because he had inflated them somehow. And then they were floating on them, holding on to them. They reported that they were stung by multiple jellyfish and were super cold the entire time. They must have been the scariest, most terrible 18 hours of their lives. So it looks like they survived. Um, At that point, I would have been like, just kill me. Just kill me now, guys. 18 hours in the ocean. And the cold and getting stung, like... (laughs) <laughs> somebody's That's like weak. somebody say like floating in the dark ocean is the common floating in the open dark ocean is literally the most terrifying thing yeah 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 straight up the darkness of the water like yeah. who knows what's, what's under there the deep you don't know how deep oh fuck no man okay am i behind can't at water so i'm just swimming <laughs> just swimming in Hold on, just, Jesus Christ. <laughs> like mm, if i get tired i'm drowning you fall off and then you just watch that boat go away because it goes fast um from my job is awesome that's awesome that you have that just simple title as your username my job my job is awesome uh says everything is awesome okay sorry (laughs) water pipe burst in a storeroom and soaked all of the toilet paper all of the toilet paper this was day two of a 14 day voyage to antarctica the cabin stewards had to swap around rolls of toilet paper between low use and high use guest cabins and it came right down to the wire none of the guests found out or realized now toilet paper is hidden in every cabin instead of the centralized location wow uh comments the day i learned that there was some optimal storage pattern for store for toilet paper on a ship <laughs> how they be judging which is high use and low use <laughs> right <laughs> exactly that's what i'm that's what i'm thinking like well wait no seriously oh, no. i think i would fall into the high use category right straight up i would mm. mm-hmm. yeah i'm i'm a regular i'm regular <laughs> I can't, I can't. and on a cruise i mean <laughs> look you want to be clean down there okay anyways okay a uh, ship arrived in Whittier, Alaska, a port for Anchorage, and an elderly passenger dropped dead while walking down the gangway. I assume it's the pathway between the ship and the and the, pit, and the pier. A conflict ensues between port security and the ship's medical team. The port security didn't want the ship's medical team to get involved because it was technically off ship and the local authorities had jurisdiction. There was really no saving the guy, but the ship's medical team at least wanted to try, but the local authorities wouldn't even allow the chief medical officer to start CPR. Dang. The wife of the deceased continued on to finish the vacation of the seven-day rail trip. She was like, I'm going to get my money. Yeah, she's just gone. Uh, My understanding was the cruise line comped her entire vacation, arranged for the remains to be returned home at no cost and provided a personal escort or uh, slash assistant for the re- remainder of the vacation oh, that's nice yeah okay this is from rj deck a few a few random 
uh, wonderful things that he I used to be a crew member and one time a guy working in the front desk jumped overboard after a crew party he was found a few hours later by the Coast Guard and everybody was asked to be discreet in order to keep the crews running smooth and everything was fine until the captain came on the PA and said we were delayed because a crew member had jumped overboard then the madness began and rumors appeared out of nowhere the rest of the crews was pretty much sucked because guests guests just kept asking what was happening the whole time mm. So don't announce that shit, captains. Okay. Um, A friend of mine got fired for getting wasted, got pissed, and started peeing all over his cabin while the security guys were there to take care of him. He spent the night in a little jail on board before being dumped the next day in whatever port we were in. Bye. Mm -mm -mm. Um, Also... Every time we had ice cream at the crew restaurant, it was because they had to empty the freezer to put a dead body. Because sometimes the morgue gets filled. There's only two or three slots or something or whatever. Are that many people dying on a cruise? uh, They say a cruise is basically a floating retirement community. (laughs) Old people (laughs) love it and and old people just die at any time. That's what what old people do. (laughs) I'm going out to see you to die. Yeah, I put... I want I want the sherbet um, <laughs> freezer. Uh, somebody comments this, and it's straight up what I was thinking. Tell me about that little jail on board. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, you know, he responds, the same guy responds of his original comment. People go nuts at sea sometimes, so it's always good to have a room designated for this purpose. It's called a brig. It could be a storage mm. closet for most of the time when it's not needed. But when it is needed, we take everything out, put the persons inside. Um, some of them have padded walls. Um, just adding extra information. Um, this is a long one. Okay. But I provide software and services for most of the major cruise lines and spend a lot of time cruising because I'm gay. (laughs) (laughs) Unrelated. (laughs) On the new builds is when you see a lot of crazy stuff happening. Uh, so new ships, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, when a brand new, yeah, okay. So when a brand new ship is built, they have to go through what's called sea trials. This is a full systems check for multiple reasons. Biggest ones, of course, safety, emissions, engine navigation, testing, etc. This happens without passengers, of course, and a lot of stuff usually breaks. Uh, they will list the ship. That means lean it all the way to one side. As hard as they can, hold it in position while doing a circle or figure eight pattern in the water. Can you imagine a whole fucking cruise ship yeah. on the fucking side just doing figure eights in the ocean? Um, so. Wait, and why are they doing this again? They're just testing it. I mean, like, a cruise ship is should be. Yeah, just should hold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because yeah. it'd be choppy water. They don't want thing to break apart. Yeah, yeah. And it's good they did this in this particular case because. I had a 600-pound wine cooler fully stocked fall face down about a few inches away from me while he was installing a PC at a bar. It sounded like a dynamite exploding from the pressure of all bottles hitting and simultaneously breaking. I froze staring at it as it, at it, as it started to come out. Girl, cut. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, cut. <laughs> Take two. Next. All right. Next. It wasn't bolted to the ground. It fell over. This is why you do these tests. All right. Next. Um, uh, one story that also comes to mind with passengers was the first sailing out of the yard. Um, the ship held about 4,500 passengers. It was a big girl, five or six massive engines to power it. About three hours into the trip, we hear a loud thump and massive vibrations. I was in an empty restaurant and saw plates and cups crashing to the ground from the vibrations. My first thought was always to see how the crew reacts. And if they're calm, you can stay calm. Uh, if they freak out, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw some with some concern, but they continue on their business, so I continue uh, with mine. Uh, three or four hours later, another loud thump and even more vibrations, and then silence. <laughs> um, they lost all engines. And mm-hmm. for whatever reason, lost all propulsion. Uh, the beast of the ship was going nowhere, <laughs> and was gonna. Well, actually, it was gonna go wherever the ocean wanted it to go. So, um, passengers were notified that we will be running late, <laughs> but to continue having fun and drinks on the house, and uh, no other f- 
info was given. Only took 12 hours to get a helicopter out with all the replacement parts needed. And they fixed that shit and the passengers were none the wiser. They were just like, mm, something's probably off and they're just fixing it. Not wow. not knowing that they're just stranded. Like yeah, all no yeah. engines are running. Um, but, you know, booze and drinks. I mean, yeah, booze and food. They don't care. Mm. They were having a good time. DJ was on it. Uh, get um, get oh, God. This one. This one freaks me out all of the computer systems run on windows 7 <laughs> <laughs> windows 7 oh well, i guess it's how what is when what, what windows this is a year ago now? this is a year ago post. oh okay so but still we're on vista or something i don't know what we're on i'm not a windows user so all the computers are windows 7 including the automation of the machinery security system fire detections whatever when windows updates <laughs> it will restart all the computers <laughs> And you're basically flying blind until it finishes. Somebody commented, said, holy shit, the thought of Windows updates over a satellite internet connection is absolutely terrifying. Yeah. (laughs) Um, This honestly sounds like an inconvenience that only horror games could come up with. (laughs) Um uh, people may be worried to hear that there is a hole in the hull, yet they're actually fairly common occurrences in older ships and can be easily plugged. A fire happens occasionally. The most terrifying was a crank case explosion. Uh, the fire suppression systems were good at extinguishing them, and thankfully the windows was not updating at the time. <laughs> thankfully. Uh, I worked on a ship almost 15 years ago, many stories, but this happened to uh, this happened. Uh, to a friend of mine, uh, a family came on. They had a teenage son who was not interested in the cruise. Mm. As soon as the family got in the room, he jumped off his balcony. <laughs> he what? just jumped off the balcony, which is insanely dangerous. They fished him out, but the whole family got kicked off the ship. Can you imagine? You didn't want to be there like, that bad. That I was this. like, exactly. I'm jumping I'm off. I'm jumping off. I'm jumping off. I'd rather die. <laughs> Seriously. What? I worked on a cruise ship for three years and got all kinds of stories. But here's my favorite one. Our ship officers got a call from a ship that was completely different cruise cruise line off the coast of Mexico. They found one of our passengers floating in the ocean. (laughs) Uh, He wasn't even near the shore at all, just floating in open water. He was alive and perfectly fine. They reviewed the security footage. In the middle of the night, the guy was drunk on deck five, could be seen holding his phone, dancing to music by himself. Me. Uh, (laughs) He climbed into one of the lifeboats and did a running jump into the ocean. He left his phone on the top of the lifeboat. His body was so fluid from being drunk, he wasn't injured when he hit the water. The crew, the so this was so he jumped off one cruise ship, and the other cruise ship spotted him and rescued him. His family didn't even know he was missing because he would book the separate room. Mm -hmm. You know, ships are big. I mean, I said it wasn't that big, but they could be big. You could live yeah, yeah, yeah. at least for 12 hours. But I'm like, dang. You, oh, I mean, I, I don't know. That, man, you were d- drunk and then, but were Why able to like that? swim. And... It's the most scary thing of all to be jumping straight into the open ocean. You're not like right off the shore. Like even that, even if I was right off the shore. Uh, this is back to the insider.com. Uh Elevators and toilets stopped working on Carnival Cruise. I'm really selling Carnival Cruises to people. (laughs) Uh, In March 2013, toilets and elevators stopped working halfway through a seven-day cruise on Carnival Dream. Quote from a passenger, Greg Stark, uh, who told CNN of the incident, There was human waste all over the floor, and in some bathrooms, The water was just overflowing and in the staterooms. Carnival Cruise Lines had to fly passengers back to Florida. Uh, They don't don't, don't worry. They received their three day refund, not the whole trip, because they, I guess they'd done four days and then they weren't able to complete. So they got the refund of the three days that they weren't able to finish. So what happens to the rest? And a half price cruise in the future. No, I don't want to go on a cruise again after that. That shitty ass experience. What? Um, oh, this is bad. Uh, <laughs> he says that happily. Ooh, this is bad. This well, is a good one. I, well, I don't. Yeah. Well, in June 2012, a group of men were hired to mingle with passengers on a Holland America gay cruise. 
When passengers saw photographers and videographers filming the men, they worried that pornography was being filmed on the ship. It's a gay cruise. Who gives a fuck what's happening? Mm -hmm. Like, just, yeah, sure, porn shoots on a gay cruise. Whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, Pornhub needs new videos. Right. Um, The men, unfortunately, were forced off the ship at first port of call. Again, dropping off where, which was in Tunisia in the middle of the Arab Spring uprising. So not only are they at war, there's a there's like a war going on. It's gay men in the Middle East. Ooh. Just saying. Yeah. It's not a good yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a good time. Um, according to the Wisconsin Gazette. I don't know why they're the ones covering this. Uh, the Wisconsin, Wisconsin, Wisconsin. <laughs> we're on the case. <laughs> we're got, we got this. We got like, this. What? Um, I, I just opened the WisconsinGetZet.com, and their slogan is "Progressive Alternative." Mm. Uh, the men were hired models who had limited money, no Tunisian visas, and no means of return passage to the, and no ability to speak the local language fucked the men <laughs> sued rsvp vacations and holland america i don't didn't follow up if who knows mm. well i guess they lived <laughs> so in that's order to right sue. if they're able to sue so they live and they I mean, you know, that, they're not a bunch of fairies they got their shit together and they got out of the country they figured it out they figured it out good for them good but for them yeah in january 2012 Early 2000s was a bad time for cruises. <laughs> right? I know. It's not like you made 2012. This 2012. is a current article, like 2019. Mm-hmm. So it's not like I'm pulling up from an old article. Um, in January 2012, the Costa Concordia, a 4,200-passenger cruise liner, was brought too close to shore and struck rocks, which tore a giant hole on its side. The ship ran aground and sank. Mm. The captain of the Concordia, however, was eventually sentenced to 16 years in prison after 32 passengers died. But not just because of that. His charges included delaying evacuation and abandoning ship before all of his passengers and crew had been <laughs> rescued. to me. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. But hey, if you're captain, that's not just like a romantic thing, mm-hmm. like to go down with the ship. I'm like, yeah, I guess yeah, you're yeah. in charge and you got to yeah. at least make sure... That everything's done before you get to leave. That reminds me of H and M. So when we had like fire at, at the captain. mall. Well, no, no, it, 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 right, captain of the H and M. H and M captain. Um, you know, when, when the mall had like fire drills or whatever, you're supposed to make sure all the customers are gone, like before you exit the store. Um, which which you're shaking your head, but like you'd be surprised how many customers hear their alarm going off, see people going out, and we're just like, no, no, no I get that part. Nice. But I still wouldn't like, do it in a what? real situation at the H and M. Well, maybe so, if I was captain of a ship, maybe, <laughs> but I, I, manager yeah, at the H yeah. and M, I had burned to the ground. I don't care. I'm leaving. I just remember laughing because it was just. Uh, girl who started working and she was there for a couple of months and we were cool anyway the fire door went off and she was like out i'm like we gotta wait for the customer out <laughs> she was just like i'm gone oh, they take it back they take like, it forever yeah away. <laughs> i was like oh man anyways dang and 30 pe- wait did the people die from that accident so i, I oh, it doesn't say uh specifically. right yeah it was from the accident so i, I assume this wow quick. so oh, it struck it sank. a whole flood in they were in the wrong part of the ship unfortunately and couldn't get out and just drowned I'm, I'm not laughing at that i'm laughing again thinking about the captain just like oh peace i done messed up this thing is sinking i'm Let out me just go exactly wow he's like grab a couple of bottles already <laughs> on the fucking raft out in the ocean he's like the first one out there Mm-mm. get why like, why is the captain getting into that lifeboat he's going what, where Let me going? show you <laughs> what to do. <laughs> right, right, right. I'm, I just feel led to do it. I feel led to do a demonstration. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> okay. I don't know if this is going to be a pan out good story, but who knows? Maybe. Bear with me as, a detail, as the details of this story are pretty fuzzy. I played in a show band for a ship once. We were in Belize. We were supposed to be back on the boat by 6 p.m. sharp as we were leaving the port at 6.30. Most of the band is stumbling back drunk. Excuse (laughs) Excuse me. (laughs) Uh, Most of the band is stumbling back drunk and they got back to the dock about 5.30 uh, when the music director gets a call. Music director. 
Okay. Hello. <laughs> Why do you do it like that? It's like, like a dialogue. I don't know why. Hello. Uh, as he's, I, that, it was <laughs> needless to just have the one like dialogue just be like it. Like there is no more dialogue. That's like it, it just says hello. Like just this, he could have just said he said hello. He, he said took hello. a call and said hello. Uh, as he's listening, his face drops, turns white, and then begins to boil red. Before any of us can ask what happened, the medical. Uh, the medical, the music director, because it says MD now. The medical, uh, the, the MD, the doctor, <laughs> the music director, takes off in a full sprint out to the docking area. The band usually hung out together, but on this particular day, the keyboard player wasn't with us. Uh, the keyboard player was a notorious partier and often pretty sloppy drunk and reckless, not knowing how else to help the rest of us. Boarded, went through security and formed the security guys that the medical. The music director just, <laughs> just took off. The medical director. <laughs> the doctor just took off and neither he nor the keyboard player had been back yet, had made it back yet. We headed down to the crew bar for more drinks and to wait out the music director and the keyboard player. Six o'clock came, 6.30, 6.40, and the ship hadn't moved yet. This is pretty strange seen as a crew waits for no one. Mm. Uh, if you're not boarded by six, you're staying on your own uh, and deal with it. <laughs> Finally, the ship starts to depart at 645 and we watch the music director rolling into the crew bar. Uh, it turns out the keyboard player tried to buy... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Tried to buy cocaine from an undercover cop in Belize. I'm like, wow. why the fuck, dude? Don't buy... Don't buy don't, do don't drugs, buy kids. don't buy club don't buy drugs in a club. a club don't buy drugs in Belize, Belize. <laughs> or like Jesus why? yeah why yeah so the music director went to the station bailed his ass out and they just walked uh, again I'm completely fuzzy on the details I but I do know that security hotel operations and the passengers never found out exactly why they were late and the keyboard player stayed on the ship every time we made in Belize from then on. Uh, he also paid for all of our drinks for a month. Added note, keyboard player got busted in a Ford country trying to buy cocaine. <laughs> Again? <laughs> wow. Someone was addicted and like, I need my cocaine. He, he was goddamn cocaine. Hey, he's a keyboard player. Mm. Um, with all of this, what I read last night, what I just r read this here is standing shit water mm. fire mm. drunk ass people jumping overboard I, see i'm not gonna be doing the jumping i don't mm -hmm. care who mm -hmm. cares who jumps off the board. that's not me uh -huh. i'm not gonna fall off the board i'm not gonna fall off the, the, the ship i'm not gonna do that i'm not gonna do that i'm not gonna get that drunk to fall off the ship and even if i am that drunk i know myself my autopilot is damn good <laughs> kids 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 fight for what you love but above all this, I wish you love. Love. And and you really should really listen to Whitney's track right after this. Or if you're on a cruise ship, just go ahead and play it now because you're probably going to be dead by the time it's over. Just get your gather your loved ones around. Hold hands. Have a kumbaya moment. And let them know how you feel because... um. It's about to be the Titanic up in there. Yeah. <laughs> like, so make sure to get all your, you know, affairs in order and the will, the finances, all that. Because if you're gonna head out on one of those things, you need to have your headstone picked out before the ship leaves the dock. Okay. The the the, the color of the funeral napkins. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't like everything. Let people know what kind of flowers you want at your funeral. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being prepared. Oh, I'm going on a cruise next month. Oh, oh, what kind of flowers do you want? Exactly. Exactly. Or do you want wood or <laughs> what kind of coffee? Cremation, cremation or exactly. Or you um, want body intact. But um before, during, and after, wash your hands. Yeah. Don't go on a cruise, leave the cruise, and not wash your hands. Yeah. Would you keep washing your hands? There's a lot of sea bacteria. Jesus Christ. There's just crawling all around that boat. And and more things. Just watch just be clean. Take a shower. Don't even go on river cruises. Yeah. Mm -mm, nothing. Stay nothing. away from water, period. Just, okay. <laughs> Unless it's to take a shower <laughs> and to drink. 
<laughs> just okay if you see a pool run <laughs> like it's like do not stop do not pass go do not collect 200 <laughs> run girl run i mean i guess if you're old it doesn't really matter but still like if my final hours are like trying to float out in dark water mm -hmm. or like being knee deep in my own shit like no like i'd rather just die in my own house than out there in the middle of the ocean no, the just floating <laughs> just just floating <laughs> fish food damn um yeah so just just stay away okay but um in all seriousness fight for what you love especially for yourself thanks for listening to the ants human stars podcast with caleb and digo Stay connected and get updates about new episodes by visiting our website, antshumanstars.com, and by subscribing wherever you listen to podcasts. If you enjoyed this podcast, please leave us a positive rating and review, and share about us with your community on social media. Thanks, y'all. We really appreciate it.